Hey, this is Dino, and I want to show you today a little bit around the Apogee API. So with Apogee X and Apogee Hybrid, there's an API that you can invoke using Curl or Postman or your favorite uh, REST client to do different operations against the Apogee organization or environment. Um, so I'm going to kind of give you a quick tour of that. So the first thing we need to do is understand where the endpoint is, and that is at um, apogee.googleapis.com. So I want to set a variable in my shell. Uh, this is the, the endpoint um, where we'll be able to reach the um, Apogee interface. Now, we're going to need to specify the organization, uh, and the environment if we want to do environment specific things. So let's set that to, for me, it's this. This is going to be different for you. Uh, and at this point, I can invoke APIs there. So the first one I might want to try is, um, let's do Apogee uh, B1 organizations, uh, and we'll maybe query the organization. Uh, what does it tell me? Unauthenticated. So, of course, I need to log in. I need to sign on. So, how do I do that? Um, I should have the gcloud command uh, available. If you don't have that, you're going to need to install that. Uh, to find it, go to Google, gcloud uh, command line. And you can search for that. Um, you'll find the reference. It'll tell you how to install it. If you're using... Um, Cloud Shell, um, then you already have G Cloud installed, um, and it's it's just available for you. Okay, so um, after you get that, you will need to log in, and um, you only need to do this once, and your login credentials are preserved. But um, the first thing you need to do is G Cloud auth uh, login. What's it going to do? It's going to tell you, um, do you want to continue? You should say yes. And it's going to give you this long uh, URL. You need to copy that and paste that into a browser address bar. That's going to allow you to log in, pick an account. You will have to enter your password if you're not already authenticated. And then it's going to ask for some consent. Um, after you read through that and, and verify that consent, um, you'll get an authorization code. You should paste that in. And now you're logged in with the gcloud command line tool. Okay, what good is that? What we want is a token. So we can say gcloud auth print access token. So that's the token we want. Uh, so let's set up an alias uh, ggt for get Google token, and that'll be uh, gcloud auth print access token. And then we'll do token equals and just run that alias. At this point, we have that token, so the prior command that is curl, we can now set in um, dash h authorization bearer and token. This should allow us to inquire that organization. So what else can we do when we look at environments? So we're now invoking the Apogee API. Uh, it's telling me I have a single environment, so let's look at eval. Um, this is my environment. What else can I do here? I can look at APIs. So here are all my uh, my APIs. I can look at one particular API. There's one called DLP example. Uh, oops, sorry, got the wrong thing there. APIs, DLP example. And it's telling me, oh, we've got three different revisions stored here. Um, and I can inquire those as well. Revisions. Um, three, it gives me some information about revision three, about revision four, about revision five. Um, what if I want deployments? I can, I can um, append the, the term deployments to those URLs, and it'll tell me the deployment status of a revision. So for revision five, um, I see there's no deployments listed. Uh, for revision four, I see there is a deployment listed, and this is the information we have. Um, so you, I hope you're finding this instructive. There's a lot of things that you can do with the, with the um, Apogee API. What, what else can you do? So let's find out. 
maybe what we can do is look for the REST API for Apigee and we'll use um, cloud.google.com as the site. Um, and here you have the information on the Apigee API. And it gives you the full reference for, um, for all the, the different uh, things that you can do in, in um, Apigee. Um, so let's see. If we expand this, you'll see it's pretty extensive, this navigation. If you're talking about deployments or API proxies or environments, it's all, um, it's all right in there. Um, so let's say we would like to deploy a particular revision. Let's say we want to deploy uh, revision 5 of this API. How would we do that? So going back over to the, um, the reference, we can look for environments, um, API proxies, uh, APIs, then revisions. Uh, and we can create revisions. There's APIs and deployments list. That's not quite what we want. Uh, APIs, revisions, deployments. I think that's what we want. So we really want to deploy. So just navigating through here and you're searching, you can find it. Um, and it's going to tell us, oh, we need to post to this URL. So it's going to be organizations, then environments, the name of the environment, the API, the name of the API, the revision, uh, and then deployments. Um, and there is an override that tells us um, to replace other deployed revisions. So that, that is to say, if there's already a deployed revision, we're going to need to specify override equals true so that um, it will override that existing deployment. Otherwise, the deployment request is rejected. Um, and then there's some other options too. Okay, so let's, let's, um, let's just check that URI again. Okay, that's what we need to do. So what do, we, what do we need to specify here? So let's try, um, we've got to specify dash x post, that's the verb. Uh, and it's got to be organizations, um, environments. My environment is stored in that variable. Then APIs, the name of the API, the revision. I want to deploy a revision five and deployment. So that ought to do it, right? So let's submit that, and ooh, that did not work. Um, only one revision can be deployed at a time. Must use the override flag. Oh yes, we forgot that, so let's put that in. Override equals true. Let's try that. Oh, what happened? Uh, another error message. It's saying you need a service account identity, but one was not provided. Aha, so going back to our definition, our reference uh, definition, I do need to specify service account. The reason for that is this particular proxy uses um, the Google authentication and it needs that service account. So let's, um, let's go back and find out what the prior uh, pro version of the proxy, prior revision of the proxy was deployed with. It was deployed with this one. That's the service account, so let's try that. So we'll do override equals true, ampersand, service account equals, and then that thing that we just copied, that uh, service account email address. And um, that works. So it said, okay, got it. We've, we've got your request to deploy that thing, and it's now being deployed. So that's all using the REST API that is defined here in the... Um, in the reference for, for Apigee. There is another option, uh, and that is using Apigee CLI, the command line tool. So there's a built-in, or the, uh, an open source command line tool. It's managed through GitHub, actively managed. You can see some updates. Uh, looks like somebody updated something three hours ago. You know, it's, it's continually updated. You can clone the source, but you can also just uh, download and install the latest Apigee CLI to your machine. So uh, we can do that with this command. Now th you got to be careful um, downloading uh, shell scripts from the internet and installing things. Um, and curl is going to tell you, hey, you should be aware of this. Just be a little bit careful. It is the Apigee um, CLI, so I'm comfortable installing that. Then I need to add that to my um, path, so I'll copy that. 
and at this point I have the Apogee CLI tool available for me and it lets me do all sorts of th interesting things. Um, one of the things I can do is um, APIs list. Uh, I believe that's, that's the, um, the command, but I do need to specify um, the, uh, the organization. So we're going to put that in there. Dash O organization, and I need a token. So that should be the thing that I set previously for those curl commands, same token. So here I've got the list of APIs. So that's basically the same as that curl command I did previously, but Apogee CLI is the, is the command line tool, and that might be a little friendlier interface for you. Another thing you could do is um, deploy. Uh, and we're gonna need the same arguments, so org and the token. And we do need um, the name of the API, and I believe that is going to be, well, let's just get the help on this. It's gonna tell us. Um, so we need to specify the API proxy name, override if we wanna override, and the revision if there's a specific revision. So let's do that. Um, oh, and the environment, of course. So environment will be um, my environment. Uh, name of the proxy will be, uh, let's call it DLP example. Um, we're going to say override, and we also want um, the revision, and that's going to be um, I don't know. Let's let's deploy revision three, which is still out there. We also need to specify that service account because it still is using that um, um, the Google authentication, so it's going to need a service account. Uh, so I have dash dash sa, and then the same uh, email address for the service account that we saw previously that was uh, this. So let's grab that and we will, we will specify that in there and it works just the same way as that curl command as you can see using Apogee CLI. Now, if there are some API proxies that do not require a service count, you can just omit that last part. And of course, these other options you can vary um, yourself as well. So that's been a quick tour of uh, doing uh, deployments of API proxies using the curl interface on the, uh, on the, the curl tool on the REST uh, Apogee API. Uh, as well as the Apogee CLI, which is really a wrapper on top of that um, REST interface. I hope this has been helpful. Uh, Till next time, keep it digital.